In chapter 3, we're going to be talking about XML and JSON. Now, XML and JSON are different, but they are used for pretty much the same thing. They're both used to store data um, or to structure data. They're actually called data interchange formats. So in this section, we're going to be going over the fundamentals of XML and things that you pretty much need to know to, to learn and use XML. Okay, so XML stands for Extensive Markup Language. It is like HTML um, in the sense that it's a markup language, but it's not a programming language. Um, programming languages have, they can make decisions, they can have conditional statements, stuff like that. Um, XML and HTML are, they're different in a way that HTML is used to display data in a browser XML is used to st structure data. Um, it has nothing to do with uh, what you see or how you see the data, it just stores it. Um, XML uses a tag syntax just like HTML, but the difference is with XML you make your own tags. There are no pre-made pre tags in XML. You can have whatever if you have a, a list of movies or um, you can have a movies tag with a with a genre tag so it's pretty much you just make up your own tags as you go um, you can also have attributes like you can in HTML uh, but we'll be going over that in a little bit XML is also fairly easy to learn um, compared to learning a entire programming language so here we have some XML history um, XML is an application profile of an ISO standard SGML, which uh, HTML also derived from SGML. Most XML comes from SGML unchanged. Um, XML version 1.0 was defined in 1998, and it's had many revisions since. Um, XML version 1.1 was released in 2004, but for the most part, um, 1.0 is the standard, that's what people use unless they have a specific need for 1.1 um, and that usually has to do with character sets or, or uh, foreign languages um, but we'll be using uh, version 1.0. There has been discussion of an XML 2.0 although no organization has announced plans for work on XML 2.0. So XML versus HTML, there's no comparison here because they are completely different and they do completely different things. Um, XML is a uh, data interchange format. It's, it's a way to structure and store data uh, and also transport data. Uh, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't display anything. Um, and then you have HTML, which is it was created to actually display data in a browser and focuses on physical aspects of a web page. Um, HTML has predefined tags, um, paragraph, headings, image tags. XML, you create your own tags. So this is a basic structure of an XML document. Um, I know these arrows aren't the best looking um, but I'm just trying to show you uh, what each element is. Um, like I said, you can define your own tags. Uh, this here is the declaration. So this is not, it's not needed to function, but you should always have it. And it's just giving us, it's just telling the browser the version uh, and also the character set of your XML document. So here, Every, every XML file needs to have a root element and a root element you can only have one instance of so here our root element is users you can see it starts here and it ends down here all tags need to have a closing tag okay so you can't open a tag and not have a closing tag so inside users inside the root element we have child elements and an example of that is user Okay, so we have a user tag, an opening tag, then we have a closing tag. Now inside the child elements, we have sub-child elements. Now you can structure this, you can keep going, you can, um, there's, no, there's no restriction of depth 
um, but you know it should be it should be readable um, in these child elements here we have a first name um, the user has a last name an email and a phone number now the relation between these tags first name last name email and phone these are siblings because they're on the same level okay um, the user element is a parent of these elements just as the root element is a parent for all elements down here you can see I have a user tag and then I have this gender equals male this is an attribute and just like in HTML we have the attribute name and then an equal sign with the value of the attribute so that's a basic XML document and the basic structure XML is used in many many different places different computer systems and databases usually have uh, different formats that are incompatible with each other but XML makes it so that you can have one one system talk to another and share data transport and share data between each other even though they're completely different platforms um, and this is where XML comes in and this is where um, it really shines um, mo today today a lot of web developers are replacing XML with JSON but this is the one aspect where XML outdoes JSON is it's very um, extensive and um, compatible with with different kinds of systems um, so XML is a software and hardware independent format for storing data so here we have some advantages of XML. Uh, it simplifies data sharing. It can be used, like I said, on many different systems and offer compatibility. Um, it simplifies the transport of data. So we can transfer data from one platform to another. Uh, it simplifies platform changes and it makes systems easy to upgrade. Um, so if they upgrade to a new platform, then they should still be able to use their data um, and not have any issues when reading XML. Um, it makes data more available. Multiple applications can access the same data um, and we can create new internet languages um, which has been done over and over. Um, we have XHTML, WSDL, RSS, RDF. Um, these are all, uh, these use XML in some way. So all XML documents have to have their, uh, there's a couple rules that they must have. Um, like I said, all tags must have an opening and a close tag. Um, unlike HTML tags, this here would, would actually be acceptable in XML. Uh, this wouldn't. This would be acceptable in HTML. Um, it's an empty tag or an empty element. Um, but in XML, we would either have to have it like this, or we could have it like this, just an open, open and close tag. Um, tags are case sensitive, so this is not the same as this. These are thought of as two different elements. Um, elements need to be nested properly, so let's say that you have a user tag, and inside that, the user tags, you have a name. Um, the opening name tag and the closing name tag must be in the user tag. You can't have the opening tag, oh, the opening name tag in the user tag, and then the closing tag on the outside of the user tag. Okay, so they have to be nested properly, or they won't work. It, the, the data will not do what it's supposed to do. Um, XML docs must have a root element like we just saw um, our structure we had a, a user root element and there can only be one instance of that element and attributes must be quoted um, in HTML it's okay to have an attribute and not use quotes but in XML you need to have the quotes so in XML we have something called schemas and a schema it, it describes the structure of an XML document. Um, you may have a system that has a, a certain schema that an XML file has to match up against in order to be compatible. All right, so a schema usually includes data that's allowed, um, data that's required, and how the data should be organized. So we'll specify 
our elements, our tags, attributes, um, things like that. And there's different types of schemas. Um, one is DTD, which stands for Document Type Definition. Uh, and then we have the XML schema, which there's different versions of. We have XSD, uh, Relax NG, and then we have the W3C XML schema language. And I'm not going to get too deep into XML schemas. Um, we will we will look into um, we'll look into them in this chapter, but not too much. Um, yeah, we'll be using DTD, I believe. So that's the gist of XML, uh, the basics, things that you need to know. Um, we'll be looking into these, the, uh, these aspects of XML as we move along. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next section where we talk about JSON.